Hey guys, even here, and yeah, I know it's been a couple of days, but really, there hasn't really been that much going on in bodybuilding lately. Finally, we have a couple of things to talk about, and we're starting off with this one. We got a physique update of Horse MD or Marcelo D'Angelis. Uh, basically, this is him right now, and he, right here, he weighs 113 pounds, and uh, he's prepping for his pro debut. Now, he won a pro card in open bodybuilding, but after he won that pro card, he said that he wants to do classic, he wants to switch to classic. And the question is not really how well would he do in classic, it's really can he make the weight and still look impressive. And if he actually looks like he looked in the open, can he beat Chris Bumstead? I mean, yeah, he looks that freaky. We don't know that until we see them on stage, but this is what Chris has to say about it. I've always respected his physique. You can tell it's absolutely a crazy physique. I don't know how the hell he's going to make a classic physique weight limit looking like that, because he looks huge. Chris has a point. It's really tough to imagine this guy can squeeze into classic and still look this freaking big. Now, somebody here asked the question that we are all asking ourselves. Obviously, it's all in Portuguese. This guy is Brazilian. So in the comments somebody asked uh, what is his weight cap in classic and the reply from another follower was 104 kilos which is 213 pounds which is how much Chris Bumstead is allowed to weight uh, at his height and I think Chris is taller than Horse MD or Marcelo so I googled it I tried to find out how tall this guy is and this is what I found on Reddit somebody replied to a question and said that he's 182. 182 centimeters is actually shorter than Chris Bumstead. That's uh, six foot. But Chris is six foot one. So this is the weight cap. Let's say he makes it over six foot. That means he can be only 220 pounds. That's just based on the information that I found on the Reddit. I'm not sure exactly how tall he is. I'm sure he has a lot of Brazilian fans. And if you guys know exactly how tall this guy is, you tell me in the comment section down below. But based on all the photos and everything, I don't think he's as tall as Chris. I think he's a little bit shorter. I think six foot is about right. At max. So here his weight is 113 kilos, which is 250 pounds. So he would have to go down to 220. He would have to lose 30 pounds to actually make the classic weight cap. Based on his conditioning right here, is that possible? I don't know. Is it possible without sacrificing some muscle? I don't think so. I don't think he has 30 pounds of fat here or water. I think he's pretty lean right here. And if he wants to go down so much, he would have to sacrifice like the fullness, the shape. Something like Regan Grimes did when he tried himself out in Classic and failed miserably. So, apparently this guy is a little bit too big. How will he look uh, if he actually goes down to 220? Or even less than that. I don't know if he's 6 foot. He could be shorter. He could be taller as well. I'm not sure. If you guys know, tell me. And also, like, hearing this caption of his, I translated this in Google Translate. And it's not really saying that he's doing Classic. He said it before, he might be changing his mind, you know, you don't know it. He basically said here something like, stay classic, you know. You can stay classic in open as well. So I don't know exactly if he's going to be doing the classic at all. He said that he would, and I don't know for sure how tall he is. But does he look like somebody who can make the classic with no problems? No, absolutely not. Uh, does he look like somebody who can somehow manage to squeeze into classic... Maybe, sure, yeah, if he really tried hard, yeah, would that be bad for his physique? Absolutely, I think it would, but it actually might be a good idea, if he wants to be competitive in the open, like this, he cannot battle big Rami, but if he downsizes a little bit, he can be battling guys like uh, Ramon and uh, uh, Urs and Brian and Terence, yeah, so, and also like it's healthier, you know, and if he likes to be classic, then why the hell not? I support his decision to do the classic, we'll see what he's gonna do. Again, if you guys know how tall he is, tell me in the comments, also tell me do you know if he's doing the classic, and whatever your thoughts are on this guy, make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. Alright, next we're gonna check out this absolute uh, freak, this monster right here, James Hollingshead. So if you read the caption, you will see that he actually took a step back, believe it or not. 
So basically, he was pushing his uh, his weight up to 310 pounds. He was at that weight in the off season. Yes, right now he's in the off season. He is absolutely peeled, shredded, 300 pounds. Basically, he was 310, and then he had some uh, problems with digestion. So he took that step back. He is down on eating, and he lost like 15 pounds. So right in the, right here, he's 296. 296 and freaking shredded last year the mr olympia he completely missed the mark he didn't peak properly not even close to properly he 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 destroyed everything all the hard work the entire year he was focusing on that one show and he messed that up completely and i don't think that's the james that we're gonna see this year i believe this year he's going to be so much better again guys he is at 300 pounds and he is freaking shredded and big and full. What the hell is going on here? I listened to him on Fuad Abiyad's podcast and he says that he was 255 when he won that Spain show. And now he's 296 and he looks like two weeks out, right? I mean, yeah, sure, there is some water that he needs to remove. But basically, he has no fat. Look at that stomach. Look at the veins in the inner thigh area. Like, he is peeled. There is no fat on this body. From behind, though, it's a little bit different story. Obviously, he's not uh, retaining any fat, any water in the front region. But from behind, in the glutes, in the hamstrings and the lower back, there is a small layer of fat and water and whatever. And yeah, he would have to die down a little bit more to be in contest uh, shape. But like, how many pounds does he really have to lose? Really? How many excess pounds do you see here? Now, again, he was 310. And he reduced some, some food, and this is him right now, dry, shredded. Do you see 20 pounds that needs to be cut off? 30 pounds? I don't know, man. I mean, like, let's say 30 pounds max. If that's right, then he will be 265. That's, two, uh, that's 10 pounds heavier than last year. And uh, I'm thinking maybe even less. Maybe even less he needs to lose. Maybe he can be even bigger, 270 to 75. Imagine that. I mean, this guy is a freaking monster right now. I just want to see him peak properly. Last year, he failed. Did he fail or Patrick Tour? I think Patrick Tour failed his coach. And he talked about it openly, basically. He said that he messed it up. It wasn't James's fault. So if James nails it this year, I still believe this guy can be a huge threat at the Mr. Olympia. I see that. I don't know about you guys, but I see him. Most of the 300 pounders are definitely more bloated, more watery, more fat than James here. Again, look at the inner thighs. Look at that stomach and look at the chest when he flexes it. There are striations, there are cuts, the, thin, the skin looks super thin. He looks freaking dry at 296. Just insane. Imagine this guy on stage shredded. A shred He's already shredded. So, if he loses 20-30 pounds, that's gonna be a sick package. I can't wait to see him on stage again. Oh, and yeah, he has 8 more weeks to push and grow before he starts dieting for the show. So, he's gonna be even bigger. Even bigger. He applied for Arnold Classic Britain, and uh, of course, they will accept his application. That's gonna be the show we're gonna see James, hopefully. I think he will win this show. Even if Nathan Diasha and Samson Daura show up, even though he didn't really prove himself, I think it's only about the time when James proves to us that he is the best British bodybuilder. What do you guys think about James Collinshead? Do you guys know this guy? Can you recognize him <laughs> with this vacuum? Yeah, this is Charles Griffin, and uh, he's gonna be doing, I believe, Indie Pro and uh, the New York Pro. He's gonna be facing Justin Rodriguez, so I don't really see him winning that show. I think Justin is gonna win those two shows, but uh, as you can see, this guy, he is fixing the biggest issue that he had. He has a blocky physique. He's short, and his waist is really thick, and he's trying to fix that by performing the vacuum. And it's not only in the abs and thighs pose. Right here he says he hated this pose so much, but now he's starting to like it. Does this look very classic, very aesthetic? Not really, but it looks better than it looked before with him. As you can see, he does in the front double bicep as well. I mean, it's not really much of a vacuum, but, you know, it's a stomach sucked in. It's not uh, flexed abs. I mean, it does make his uh, wheat taper look better. Does it really help his physique? I'm not really sure. I mean, 
it does look a little bit more <laughs> aesthetic. I don't know. I don't like to use this word. This word when I'm talking about Charles Griffin, I don't think he's very aesthetic bodybuilder. Uh, we just watched the horse MD. That's aesthetic bodybuilder. That's an aesthetic pro open bodybuilder. But like, how how well can a guy like that do in open pro shows at the top ranks? You know, not really that well. These guys are much bigger, and that's what is needed. And if these guys can somehow make their physiques a little bit more, not only classic, but more aesthetic, they do better, they do well. So here is him doing the front double bicep with a, let's call it a vacuum. How does it look like? I mean, not great, but again, let's say better than before the stomach at least. Here's a pose that I really like with this uh, change added. So without flag stabs, with uh, stomach pulled in, without vacuum, his physique looks better in the front relaxed. You know, his waist looks smaller. I think he's doing something else too, I think he's pushing his shoulders in front and he's pulling his hips uh, back and also it makes his legs look bigger, which is also an issue of his, you know, when the, when the waist is smaller, your quads look bigger and he has a little bit smaller quads and also it makes your shoulders look wide if you, if you definitely, if you put them, if you push them forward, so this vacuum of his definitely helps him in this pose and uh, as you can see he's nine weeks out and his conditioning is actually pretty good that's not gonna be an issue he's always pretty conditioned now in the in the, in the front lat spread you can notice that he is also trying here to to suck his stomach in to do a vacuum i know it's not easy to do a front lat spread especially if you're pushing your chest out but he's doing the best he can and like you, you can see that his waist looks smaller even though he's not doing the vacuum practicing the vacuum made him uh, learn to control the midsection better and it just looks smaller it makes his physique look more impressive so props to charles griffin i'm looking forward to seeing him on stage i don't think he's gonna win though but this is gonna be a positive change for sure and i like to see that in open bodybuilding hassan mustafa we haven't really talked about this guy in a while and uh, not since he was competing last year he was competing in so many shows and he brought conditioning zero times really we still haven't seen this guy shredded. Why is that? I don't know. Is it some genetic problem? Is it a problem with coaching? Does he have a bad approach to things? I don't know. Hopefully this year he will figure it out. I don't know if his coach is still Chris Aceto, but Chris was helping him before and it really didn't work out. So maybe he should try a different coach. I don't know if he changed one. But this is him right now, 13 weeks out of, I'm not sure which show, is it New York Pro in 13 weeks, you guys tell me. But this is him, at 13 weeks out, his conditioning is good. A healthy bodybuilder with no problems coming in conditioned can make uh, a stage ready conditioning in less than 13 weeks from this point, for sure. I know he's really big, he's really massive, and when you're that massive, you can't come in classic conditioning, but... Uh, he doesn't have an issue like, for example, Steve Kuklo. It's not the depth of the separation, no, it's just fat, right? It's not even water, it looks like he needs to trim down all the fat, which is something he cannot do. Is he cheating on his diet? Does he have a health issue? Uh, is it a, a wrong approach, like he, he, he lowered the food that much that his uh, metabolism is stalling or something like that? I don't know, I don't think anybody knows. Maybe this year he will figure it out and fix it. I hope so. Because look at his side chest right here. He is a mass monster, this guy. If he finally nailed the conditioning, that there isn't really many bodybuilders that can beat him as far as mass, as far as shape, as far as crazy freaky structure. You know, this guy is really blessed in so many regards aside from getting conditioned. I'm just assuming here, maybe that's it, maybe he's just cheating on his diet, maybe his coach has a bad approach, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see though, right now he looks absolutely amazing, hopefully his food is very high, he can play with calories for a long time, and uh, hopefully his coach, whoever it is, is going to focus on Hassan and actually bring him shredded. Alright, Hari Chupan, next, we haven't really seen many updates of this guy uh, since the Mr. Olympia, but this is him right now, in the offseason, great point for the offseason, I mean, uh, Hari is known for having that crazy quality muscle, and I've been to like world championships and I've seen so many Iranians and they all have something unique about uh, basically all their physiques, all their guys have this hardness, crazy hardness, 
crazy quality and fullness. It's genetic, really, that's what the Iranians, the Persian guys have, and Hari is representing that at the very highest level. So even if this guy gets a little bit chubby in the offseason, you can still see that graininess. Through a little, through a small layer of, of fat or water, whatever it is, you can still see the high quality, the hardness, you know, the graininess. And his midsection looks amazing right now. So you can see all the abs, you can count them. Uh, he's not even relaxed in the stomach. I'm sure he's eating a lot to maintain this size and to make improvements. But his stomach looks good and his conditioning looks great. He's right where he needs to be. And you know what? I gotta say it. It's been three years since we saw uh, Hadi Chopin peaked properly. Now, he always speaks nicely, he always looks pretty good on stage, but what we saw in 2019 on that one Coor Pro stage is something I cannot forget. Like, that was one of the best physiques I ever saw on a bodybuilding stage. I didn't see it in person though, but I saw all the photos and I was so amazed with his quality, with his conditioning, with his hardness, fullness, everything was so spot on. I just really hope that this is not his life form. I hope he's going to be even better. You know, it, it happens. Like, bodybuilders, they peak once in their careers. And, you know, it's some, it's some show that's not even Olympia. And I hope it's not going to be 2019 Vancouver Pro for, for Hari because he really looked amazing at that show. I hope he will peak for the Mr. Olympia in 2022 or 3 or 4. I just hope it's going to happen in in future because we haven't seen fully peaked Hari Chopin since 2019. Is it going to be this year? I don't know. I hope so. Whatever you guys think, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.